Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We have a selection of different items received in this mailbag, mostly composed of tools and accessories to use around the electronics workbench. And I'm gonna start with this smart socket from Sonoff. This is the S20 model. And you probably know that Sonoff smart gadgets are some of the cheapest you can get. And yet their quality is decent enough. I have previously ordered the S26 model and now I got the S20 and I think it was on sale or something like that and I don't know I have this slight feeling that the S20 is a uh, newer model but it seems like the difference between these two is just in, in how they look because on the back uh, the specs are the same it's 2.2 uh, kilowatts 10 amp hours uh, and it just seems like the S26 is a slightly uh, bigger enclosure than the S20. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about ordering one of those, uh, you know, getting the uh, S20 will probably give you a uh, lower volume overall, but it, it just seems like the S20 is maybe just a millimeter or two thicker uh, I don't know, but on the width and the length, it's definitely uh, smaller if you get the S26 model. I plan to use one of these for my uh, 3D printer to automate turning power on and off to the uh, printer and another one to control this uh, flame type lamp that I have in the living room. I'm using Home Assistant to control stuff like this in my home, so it should be pretty easy to set up. There's also the option of controlling these through the supplied EWI Link app, uh, but I much prefer having everything integrated into Home Assistant. And then I also have a bridge which uh, enables these uh, devices to be present uh, in the Home app on iCloud. So that that all uh, that whole ecosystem works better for me. A few weeks ago, I mentioned uh, getting this uh, aluminum plunger from a mechanic for my solar paste and flux syringes, which are usually delivered without uh, this kind of plunger. And it was a big hit. Many people saw the advantage of having something like this on the workbench. And I mentioned back then that I was going to order another one so I can have two. One installed on the uh, solar paste syringe and another one on the flux, on the flux syringe uh, or uh, something else that I have on the bench. Well, here is the uh, second one. I still think they're great and they make your life easier for such a minimal cost and they are reusable, which is great. So if you didn't already get one, there will be links in the description to places where you can order these. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. They offer professional PCBs manufactured at affordable pricing with fast turnaround times. They also offer complete turnkey solutions where they handle everything from sourcing the parts to assembling and testing your boards before shipping so you can get them fully assembled. Check out their website, link below. Maybe a year or two ago, I started using these uh, Vitus tweezers on my workbench. They are of decent quality. I mean, a good price to quality ratio Probably not as good as the $30 or $40 a piece tweezers, but I can't be spending that much on a pair of tweezers. So these Vitus ones get the job done. And like I said, with decent quality. However, nobody is going to notice you if you are using one of these uh, ESD safe black Vitus tweezers. If you really want to catch some attention, then you need one of these tweezers. Now, this is eye candy. I mean, it starts with the packaging. This ships in a uh, cylindrical tube that will uh, protect it during shipping. And the look and feel of these uh, tweezers is just great. It has this rainbow color uh, changing effect on its surface. Uh, it's very light and feels high quality. And this might not be ESD safe. I don't know, I'm not sure, but Come on, you're not gonna kill a chip with a non-ESD safe pair of tweezers. So I'll probably won't be using this daily, uh, but uh, I will discreetly pull this out when I have some visitors looking over my shoulder at my workbench just to show it off. Links for this are in the description just as usual. As I was browsing through AliExpress on one of those uh, stores that specialize in uh, Xiaomi products, uh, I came across this uh, utility knife and I thought I'd, I'd give this a try. The brand of this uh, utility knife is Fizz, so I think Xiaomi rebrands and sell this. Maybe it says Xiaomi here when you buy this in China, but I believe this is the OEM. 
I got the package that also comes with some uh, spare blades because I wasn't sure if these are standard size or something custom and I wanted to make sure I have some spares available for this knife. Then this looks and feels like a um, very high quality utility knife that you would get from the local hardware store and pay a lot for it. Uh, it's obviously very sharp. Uh, it's just this uh, smaller size and the body is uh, made from aluminium. I would probably keep this uh, on my desk or in my office backpack to reach for it when I have to open some packaging or something like that. And for the cost of this plus the uh, reserve blades, I can't get anything to match this uh, quality level locally. And on the plus side, it also looks really good with this uh, black aluminium finish. Next, I got myself a couple of uh, cheap, different model HDMI cables. And this is your typical uh, 1080p HDMI cable. This is one meter long. Uh, and I guess the main feature of this is uh, that it's a flat cable. This probably can't do 4K, nor do I need it to do that. I just need 1080p, a one meter long HDMI cable for my microscope camera. The second one claims it can do 4K and I guess the main feature of uh, this one is that uh, it's thin and has this uh, braided insulation uh, which makes it look cool. And you might remember I fiddled with the HDMI between my microscope camera and monitor some months ago. I ended up with this uh, one meter thick HDMI cable. It's so stiff I want to switch it again to something which is softer and puts less stress on the HDMI sockets. So not much to be said about this, only that uh, this flat one which can only do 1080p is slightly more flexible than the braided one. Uh, so it's likely that this uh, softer one, more flexible, will end up in my setup. If you haven't seen my video dedicated to these Kafuter adhesive products, then you should because uh, it might, you might want to start using these products. They have several advantages like cost and they're available in a wide range of products that you can easily order from AliExpress. That's Vollog331 and I will link it on screen right now so you can check it out. I need a refill for these two, the uh, K704 and K705 and uh, these came with a day code of September, so it's not too bad. They're pretty fresh out of the factory. The uh, K704 is this white silicon type adhesive, which I use as elastic to hold down stuff, while the K705 is a transparent type silicon adhesive, which I usually use as conformal coating. It's great stuff to have in your toolbox. I highly recommend these. Next up, I have a set of plastic spacers for 18650 battery cells. And these have four cells per structure, but they can be interlocked in this uh, honeycomb-like structure to allow you to make battery packs and pack as many cells as possible in a certain volume. The nice thing about these is that they will allow you to keep your cells nicely aligned so you will get consistent results if you're building multiple battery packs, but they also add this mechanical rigidity to your pack which avoids putting stress on the connection points uh, on the cells. I definitely recommend using something like this if you're building battery packs. I'm pretty sure you can find them in a size that will be optimal for the battery packs you are building. Links for this will be in the description below. Next item is a hard shell EVA carry case, which I believe is uh, designed for a uh, GoPro and some accessories. It comes with this foam insert that is already pre-cut with these sections uh, that I believe will fit a GoPro and its accessories. And I found that uh, this works great for a uh, nano VNA and you can get rid of the foam insert completely or you can cut this to fit the nano VNA and um, its uh, accessories. There's also plenty of space in here uh, where you can put uh, uh, like a stylus, a, a charging cable or other connectors. I also have a uh, second EVA case. This one is slightly smaller. Uh, this was intended for a Nintendo 3DS and this one also fits the uh, Nano VNA and is actually cheaper than the first one and you don't need any foam insert because when it closes it kind of fits tightly in, in there and it doesn't move around. So I will uh, link both of these in the, in the description so you can choose the one you like best. The point here is that these are great for protecting and storing small pieces of gear like the Nano VNA. 
If you are like me and you like to fuss about the looks of a control panel, you're probably searching for that perfect aluminum knob for a potentiometer or a rotary encoder. I still haven't found the perfect one, but uh, for a project I'm working on, this compact aluminum encoder comes pretty close to that and it's miles ahead of the uh, plastic options that you usually find for chip. This is 12.5 by 16 millimeter and it's really nicely machined from a piece of aluminum and it also has this um, a grub screw for attachment to the shaft and it really feels high quality. My only complaint is that they're not so easily available in this particular model. Only one or two sellers carry these and you have to get a pack of five uh, for it to start to uh, make sense economically. Next up I have a set of M4 flange hex nuts with nylon inserts and I hope I got the naming correct on these but it's pretty simple I can explain it in simple words. I needed some M4 nuts and I needed them to have this wider base because they will probably fit over some plastic, uh, some 3D printed plastic piece and I want a larger contact area. I also needed some um, short um, and 6 millimeter long M3 screws so I got a few of these in uh, white uh, actually black and uh, silver finish with a Phillips head and I must say it's been a while since I bought my screws and nuts locally because here in Romania we don't have like a McMaster car type website where you can just find anything you need on stock and order it easily so I mostly plan ahead and resort to Aliexpress for this kind of stuff just because the selection is wider and I can find the stuff that I need with a few clicks there's no minimum order and stuff like that and this brings me to my next item which is a, a set of storage bins uh, into which I'm storing various bits and uh, pieces like screws, nuts, washers, uh, etc. I have already used this one and placed some uh, switches inside but I pretty much have one of these uh, storage bins for everything like blade connectors, M3, M4 screws, various other types of connectors and the list can really go on. Over the course of this year I happened to need some o-rings on a few different occasions so I finally decided to order myself a set of o-rings and while I was there I ordered two sets because the price was good and I would be getting more size options. Uh, the seller just mentions rubber as the material for these and claims universal use. I'm not very knowledgeable with these materials and their uh, uses but I'm sure some of my viewers are and uh, they will let us know in the comments where it would be safe to use these o-rings and where it wouldn't be. Uh, like I would ask would these be safe to use in contact with uh, diesel fuel for example or would these be safe to use in contact with some antifreeze or should I just stick with oil and water uh, considered safe for this. Let me know in the comments because I have no idea. My next item is a set of uh, three diamond sharpening stones. Well maybe that's not the correct name here because these are not actually stones but rather thin strips of metal which have these uh, diamond particles onto them. I'm not even sure if the particles are stuck by electroplating or with some form of adhesive but I guess that for the price I paid for them it would be which way it's cheaper. So these are obviously uh, cheaper than a true diamond stone and I was wondering if you guys have any experience by uh, with using these for sharpening knives. I would appreciate some feedback in the comments because I would like to try and learn how to sharpen a knife on these and I'm curious if that would work. I also have a real diamond sharpening stone on its way and would I be better off uh, starting with that. I would also ask what kind of liquid you would use on these because uh, if they're metal using water might make them rust over time so using something like WD-40 which is recommended uh, a lot on various offset, uh, websites would create a film which is about 17 microns and that would probably cover the roughness found on a uh, 1000 grit plate uh, which I think it's about 5 microns so taking away that grinding efficiency if you use the wrong lube on uh, this 1000 grit plate. But if these are not fit for sharpening knives, I'll just use them for a general purpose work in the lab, you know, grinding down some PCBs, uh, stuff like that. And these are my last two items. 
in here there's a set of these abrasive scotch bright wheels for the Dremel tool and these would be great for polishing uh, metals and although they look uh, very similar between the different uh, colors uh, they are different grid sizes or at least that's what they claim depending on the color of these so I will just overlay uh, a picture of that so uh, you can get an idea and in here I have a bundle of uh, steel wire wool and there should be about three meter long strip in here with a width of I don't know about 10 centimeters and this is coated as grade uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. that's four zeros and I have no idea what that means uh, it's the first time I'm buying this stuff and same as the previous item its intended use would be to uh, polish metal items this was all for today same as always you'll find links for all of these items in the description below the video check them out and let me know in the comments if you found something interesting to order in this video on screen I will put a link to a playlist with all of my mailbag videos so you can check it out Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that like button to show your support for the channel.